Good morning to all of you. And welcome back to the Namaste experience. The experience that you could never leave even if you wanted. And for some reason we have wanted to leave that experience. We're just beginning to figure that out. And then we ask the question, why? Why would I want to leave this experience of wholeness and love and bliss? Well, we could talk about that for a few days if you want, but let's just say that whatever the reason is, it is fallen away. Whatever the reason was, it no longer applies. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Yeah. No longer applies. So, I want to begin by, by telling a little story. And this story is going to be all about waking up. Waking up to this reality. And when we do wake up, how the confusion that we've been in until now passes on its own. So this is a story about uh, a man who is going to knock on his son's door because he has to get up and go to school. And so he knocks on the door. He doesn't hear anything. So he opens the door. He says, Billy, you have to get up and go to school now. And Billy rolls over. He says, I'm not going to school. And his dad says, Billy, come on, you have to get up. It's time to go to school. And his son says, I'm going to give you three reasons why I'm not going. Number one, it's boring. Number two, none of the kids like me. And number three, I don't like school. So his father says, well, Billy, I'm going to give you three reasons why you have to go to school. Number one, it's your duty. Number two, you're 45 years old. And number three, you're the school principal. <laughs> it's time to wake up. But hitting that snooze button in the more, how, how many of you are like me and, and, and you could just hit that snooze button five or six times if given the opportunity. There's just something about that, that feeling of just 10 more minutes. If I can just get 10 more minutes, I'll be fine. And then after that, oh, just 10 more, just 10 more. It's always 10 more that we could have and stay asleep. But the moment has come. The moment has arrived to awaken, and that's the reason we're here. We feel it moving within us. Something, it's like percolating within us. Or even more so, it's like a volcano. We can feel the power and the urgency of this awakening. I like that word, urgency. It's not urgent because there's something going on out here that we need to respond to. It might be tempting to think of it in that way. I have to wake up now so I can play my role in X, Y, and Z. No, it's urgent because this is the only experience or reality that is ever going to give you what you really want, what you're really seeking. And you've come to the point now in the dream where to stay in is going to become more and more chaotic. We wonder why all this is happening in the world, the polarization, all these things are all in my mind. And they're the manifestations of my trying to keep hitting that snooze button. But just like Billy, it's time to wake up. Time to go to school. So we're going to talk a little bit about confusion here in a moment, but uh, just to remind all of you, I'm, I'm having so much fun, and it seems that everyone is with our uh, little series we're going to be doing for two weeks called The Mind of the Mystic. So yesterday we started off with a quote from St. Augustine in the 5th century. And today we're going to move all the way up to now. And what we're doing, I hope you all brought a notepad or something with you, or you could always do it in your, on your phone. Um, we're going to be taking one line from each of these mystics. I'm going to demonstrate this because what I've done is I've added a little bit to each line. And what this does, the, the power of this is it, it allows us to claim it as our own. Not just to hear something that 
Augustine said, or Merton said, or in this case, James Finley said, but to, to take that, to drink it in, and then to let something even deeper come out through you, okay? So what we'll do is I'll share that quote in just a moment, and then we'll go ahead and, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go through our process. And then I'll have a few of you share uh, what, what, what inspired you. But I want to talk a little bit about James Finley first. Some of you know who James Finley is, some of you may not. We just actually, here at Namaste Village, showed a, uh, the interview that I did with James Finley just a few weeks ago. James is one of the, of the teachers who is uh, on the, the Mystics Summit that the Shift Network is doing and that I'm the host of. I've had so much fun interviewing all these people and sharing that with our community because we always have a little audience sitting out here. And James Finley, I have to say, was my very favorite. That's why I asked them to send me the video in advance so I could show the, the community. So James uh, is a, a true Christian mystic. Uh, when he was a freshman in high school, uh, his teacher, I think it, it was his theology teacher, started talking about monasteries, something he had never heard of before, even though he was raised Catholic, but he had a, he had a very, um, very severely uh, damaged alcoholic father, and, and, and this pushed him inward. In fact, most of his work today is in trauma, which he experienced. But when he heard this, uh, this idea of going into a place where the only priority is that communion with love itself that sparked something in him. And his teacher mentioned someone who was very, very popular at that time, named Thomas Merton. Thomas Merton had, had written his first autobiography, The Ten, Sto the Ten no, The Seven Story Mountain, which became a huge hit. Everybody was reading it. It was all about the life that led him to enter into the monastery uh, of Gethsemane, which is a Cistercian monastery, meaning that they're pretty serious about it. They're not, they're not lackadaisical about their contemplation. So when, when James Finley was 18, he entered that same monastery because he was so uh, moved by Merton, and Thomas Merton was his novice master. So to have someone like Merton with you every week just guiding you and, and the richness of, of that joining was just such a gift for him. And even though he left the monastery six years later, he continued to live that life and began to, to do workshops and, and lead retreats. And, and here he is now, many, many years later, just such a rich source of wisdom. So... There was one line, I'm going to be sharing different things from James Finley, but there was one line that really jumped out at me, and it's about confusion. The confusion that we find ourselves in, in this split mind, where we have believed something that could never possibly be true. We have bought into a whole system of so-called reality that could never possibly be real. And this is the world of the ego, or the split mind. So I want to read the line first, and we'll, I'll do it a few times so you can really take it in. And if you have a notepad, I'll encourage you just to write this line down. Finley says, Your confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are. Once again, your confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are. Now before we go further, there is something that, that I've meant to do at the very beginning, but we'll do it now, and that is to just enter into that state of receptivity, to just be still for a moment and let God begin to do that work of love in our hearts. So with that in mind, what we just heard, just close your eyes, take a couple of deep breaths. 
And I'll say each of these lines and then just mentally repeat them and then take a breath. Be still and know I am God. Be still and know I am. Be still and know Be still. Be. <coughs> Once again, your confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are, your reality, the truth that is forever true within you now. No matter how confused you seem to be about that, no matter how deep asleep you may be, dreaming of impossible worlds, putting yourself into impossible situations, none of those things have the power or the authority to truly name, or to even truly know, the truth within you. So this is the line that I wrote after James Finley's. I'll read his again. Your confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are. Clarity comes from not from groping in the dark, hoping you'll discover something you claim as real, but finding the light switch and turning it to the on position. Then the real appears on its own. Then the real appears on its own. So what I want you to do now is to just open and allow the Spirit to move through and as you, and to just write your own sentence or two after James Finley's quote, which once again, your confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are. And what I'll do is I will sing that same chant that we shared yesterday from Augustine. Let me know myself in thee, O Lord, nothing more, nothing more. As you just allow yourself to breathe into the perfect response for you. Let me know myself in thee let me know myself in thee nothing more nothing more let me know myself in Let me know myself in thee. Let me know myself in thee. Nothing more, nothing more. 
Let me know myself in thee. Let me know myself in thee. Let me know myself in thee. Nothing more. Nothing more, let me know myself in thee. Okay, so now I want to invite a few of you to to share just those one or two sentences. And if you would, when you do, share by beginning with the Finley quote, so we can see how they link together, to see how one moves into the other. And let's have people who did not share yesterday. So at some point or another throughout this two weeks, everybody will get to share. Who would like to come up? All right, come on up, Chris. Your confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are. I cannot depend on the dream to tell me who the dreamer, uh, who is the dreamer of the dream. I accept that I am the dreamer of the dream. I am the dreamer of the dream. Therefore, I have the power to wake up anytime I choose. This is the time I choose, right now. There can be no other time but right now. Yes, Betty. Betty, and then... Your confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are. Believe fully in your own sacred space or, or place or space. Read it one more time, just, just your part. Believe fully. Believe fully in your own sacred place or space. Believe fully in your own sacred okay. space. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm. <clears throat> and then belief at some point, and this is really the, the beautiful magic of this, belief turns into certainty where you know. You no longer believe, but you know. But it has to begin with that. So, Carolina, you want to come up? I'm quite surprised by what you just said. <laughs> come on in. Okay, so... You want to read the, the Finley line first? Right, the Finley line. Your confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are. Thank you. So, certainty... This is why I was surprised. Mm -hmm. You just said certainty. Mm -hmm. Certainty is the path that I have taken and that I follow in the light within. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's beautiful. How about one more from Namaste Village? Come on up. Everybody will have a chance. Your confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are, but the truth within you does. Stop, listen for that name, and know that very listening is your true silent name. Wow. Wow. That was a really good one. <laughs> They're all great. Thank you so much. So now we're going to go ahead and let's open it up to the Zoom room. Confusion about who you are does not have the authority to name who you are. Uh, the stillness in your heart can know what the mind cannot name. The stillness in your heart cannot know. What was no, the can other? know. Can know. What your mind cannot name. Oh, beautiful. 
That's really beautiful. Thank you, Tisha. Judy. Thank you. I trust the holy self I am in truth illuminates this experience in my soul now of who I am in God's thoughts. Mm. Beautiful. Wow, I love doing this. This is so fun. How about, okay, we've got Angelina. You can turn your camera on or leave it off however you want. Oh, there we go. Good morning, Angelina. Hi. <laughs> Okay, um, the confusion of who you are does not have the authority to name who you are. Yes. Who I am is beyond a label. Who I am is beyond the past that led me to believe in the limited illusion of who I thought myself to be. Who I am is the unlimited potential that wishes to be expressed through me. Mm. The unlimited potential that longs to be expressed through and as me. The unlimited potential. So beautifully said, thank you. Wow. So now, now we get the, the, the cherry on top of the Sunday. Victoria Poppy. Vic <laughs> Morning, Brother James. Good morning, everyone. I'd love to hear what you shared and then whatever, wherever you want to go with it. All right. I loved all of these answers. So my confusion about who I am, it does not have the authority to name who I am. And my answer is I'm always very simple. My confusion is not. And um, rest, the rest of it was rest and let it disappear. Let it die of neglect. That's for me, it's always what action quickly lets go of the seeming appearance of fear. And confusion is just an expression of fear. And fear is not. I don't have to wrestle with it. I don't have to argue with it. I don't have to handle it. You know, handling it, I think, is very important because that's that has had great value in this culture to handle things and resolve them. Handle nothing. Rest into what we are, because the confusion is that loud voice that is nothing but a cover-up, a distraction for what is already there. And what is already there reveals itself when we no longer willingly cover it over. Holding my attention on confusion is a way of holding the covers over who I am. And let it die of neglect, let that confusion, we are the source of the confusion and we are the end of the confusion. So I'd rather let it just dissolve, let it just fall away and let what is be revealed. Because I know that we live here and we can live here by the grace of revelation, not just revelation that brings us peace to know that we are that presence that we touch, that we sense with every feeling of love, every feeling of peace, every feeling of rest. We are that. But it also unfolds into our daily life wherever we find ourselves. The answer that unfolds is our choice, wherever we've put our attention. So if I put my attention on that confusion, I will unfold an, a, a predicament of confusion. And if I put my attention on resting into the presence that I am and not covering it, then that presence will unfold as grace around me, as, um, as love, through me, as me, and around me. So it's another moment of stop, drop, and pray, brother. <laughs> stop, stop, drop, and let what is shine out. Let it sing out in ourselves. Because if it doesn't sing out in ourselves, the song is not heard. We are the voice for the song of love. And so when confusion comes, welcome it and let it pass. <clears throat> That's all. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. That's all. That's all we need. Just let it die of neglect. I love that idea. 
This is the, the difference between what this is and what psychotherapy is meant to be. Psychotherapy is all about digging in, digging in the dirt, and trying to unravel all of those past associations and erroneous beliefs and all of the tricky things that have set us upon a course of confusion. And first, you know, that can be effective, but it's a very long path. It takes a long time. I, I really prefer, you know, let the illusion die of neglect as I focus only on love. As I let every moment reveal to me the power of love. And I bring that into every relationship, into every moment. And it's my willingness to do that. And then to remember when I'm not doing it, because of course none of us are going to be perfect in that. We're all going to fail miserably. But we remember. We, we recommit. We may need to recommit 30 times a day, and that's okay. But recommit. That's the important thing. Scott. I'm here. Do you have a, po a song about recommitting? Yes, I do. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> so we're going to have Scott, and then we're going to do a final prayer together. So come on in, Scott. First thing that comes is the, the Rumi. I think it's a Rumi poem. Um, be welcome here. Even if you've broken your vow 10,000 times, be welcome here. Be welcome here. Be welcome here. Even if you've broken your vow, Ten thousand times recommit. There is no judgment upon your shit. Let it die of neglect as God you select. Put your attention. On the dimension of what the ego does not give honorable mention to the love inside of me and you the love that is forever true recommit ten thousand times a day get in the fear out of the way we know you have a past and you've been pissed but you don't need a psychotherapist <laughs> just focus on the light and the fact everything is always all right recommit reconnect when you're in do-do, say what the heck Don't project that you need to be perfect We're gonna fail a thousand times a day It's okay Just recommit Jamie. That is just amazing. I know I say that every time, but it, it just amazes me. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to close our session here in a very special way, uh, something we've never done before. Uh, so we, we, here at Namaste Village, uh, a dear friend of mine, Nilu, uh, arrived last night. And Nilu is Iranian, and uh, she has a deep love for Rumi, and I, I love the fact that you started with, with Rumi. And sometimes hearing, I mean, hearing a Rumi poem, for example, in English can be so powerful, but hearing it in the original language, hearing it in Farsi, and just letting it be music can be even more powerful. So I, I, I asked Nilu if she would be so kind as to come up and to share a Rumi poem for us in Farsi.
Hello, everyone. Um, this was pretty unexpected. <laughs> right into the mic. I'll just do a small line uh, of one of his most uh, famous ones, uh, where he refers to "Qatr daryaost, agar ba daryaost, barna an qatr haman qatr ba darya daryaost," which means uh, a drop is just a drop, but when it's with the ocean. It is the ocean, and it's referring to the ocean of love, which is God. So we are all pieces of God. Can you do the Farsi one more time? Qatr daryaast, agar ba daryaast, barna an qatr hamon qatr ba darya daryaast. Thank you. So beautiful. Isn't that nice? Okay, so. Let's go ahead and we'll close with something we haven't done in quite a while, but I want to bring something up onto the screen. Uh, and we're going to share our affirmation, our morning affirmation together. So, with energy and enthusiasm, please join me. I am as God created me. If I remain as God created me, fear has no meaning. Evil is not real, and misery and death do not exist. I am as God created me. Amen, 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 e punto.